Hello there friends and welcome. For today's guide I went with a very special Azata Bard build. That's right, not a pet and not a trickster or angel build, but Azata. Bards can be a very powerful class in Wrath of the Righteous and with this build you achieve extremely high physical stats with absurd strength, great attack bonus, very high damage, many critical hits, incredible saving throws, super high skill ranks in all of the knowledge and also lore skills, not to mention very high persuasion too, so your bard can truly be the face of your party to easily pass any dialogue check. And the ultimate party support to not only all of the bard songs and powers, but also the very unique Azata only mythic spells that can highly enhance your party and even do something no other mythic path has access to, restore ability uses and even spellbooks loss for your whole party. So without further ado, let us get started first with the mechanics behind the bard class and the best archetypes. Alright, so before getting into each bard archetype, let's talk about the main features of the class. And as you might have expected it, it is the bard songs. Bards have a lot of songs to support your entire party. The most important one and the one you'll be using most of the times is Inspire Courage, which grants your whole party, pets included, a competence bonus to both attack and damage rolls and scales quite wonderfully until around level 17. You also have Inspire Competence, which is the same, except it enhances your skills. Great for making dialogue checks and so on. Eventually, you can even increase the armor class of all your party members by plus 4 morale, something very rare. The only downside of your bard songs is that, well, you can only have one at the same time. However, you can actually pre-buff before battle with your songs, especially when you combine this with the lingering performance feat, Bards also get quite a lot of extra feats, that's 5 bonus feats you have for free, their main bardic knowledge skill adds half their class levels to all your lore and knowledge checks, so it's pretty much impossible to fail any check regarding lore with your bard. Lastly, they also have up to level 6 spellcasting. The late bard spells aren't really that useful, but on the other hand, the early ones up to around level 4 are quite powerful. You have a lot of nice buffs such as Blur, Mirror Image, Sense Vitals. Most importantly, the Good Hope spell at level 3, one of the best buffs in the entire game that only Bards and Scalds have access to. Now, speaking about Scalds, I might as well make a comparison between both of these classes. If you've watched some of my previous videos, then you know I really enjoy the Scald class, and I always recommend having it as a mercenary for pretty much almost every party. To put it simply, because Scalds can share their rage powers with your whole party, including multiple ones at the same time, as opposed to the Bard song, they do offer more for melee-heavy parties. On the other hand, a Bard can enhance the power of ranged parties and spellcasters more, I'd say, as your main song works with all ranged weapons and does not block spellcasting. Plus, they also have some very nice crowd control abilities, such as Fascinate, which is quite amazing for how early you get this, the will saving throw can become quite high and enemies that fail the save basically cannot do anything so long as you don't attack them. This eventually becomes a swift action even so you just activate it and can still perform your other actions for the round while the enemies stand there drooling. And second, the Dirge of Doom power that automatically shakens all enemies surrounding your character without a save. So does have quite a lot of synergy with the Shatter Defenses feat. Lastly, you can actually have both a bard and a scald at your party for a maximum power. For example, there's no point for a scald in picking lethal stance which increases only your attack rolls by a competence boost if the bard can already cast Inspire Courage instead for that and also to damage rolls, which then lets the scald focus on another stance such as powerful stance or reckless stance for even higher bonuses to attack rolls and damage. Bards can eventually even get on-demand party wild healing Anyway, so now that we know the main differences between a bard and a scald, let us get started on our bard archetypes. The first one is Archaeologist. This is kind of a selfish bard, so your Inspire Courage is replaced by Archaeologist Luck, which only empowers your bard, so you don't get any buffs to your party members. They also have access to the advanced at rogue talents for more self-power and even some bonuses to trickery, perception, and trap finding. Like I said, it is basically a greedy bard that only cares about themselves. Because, well, when I think bard, I think about party-wide bonuses. I'm not much of a fan of archaeologist, 
but it is certainly not a bad class, I just much rather buff my party members and pets too. This tamer is kinda wimpy, so you do get free access to the summon nature line, but your summons are kinda weak in Wrath of the Righteous, and to make them become truly good, well, you have to go through a lot of hoops. It's not really worth it, at least not for a bard, because of how powerful the enemies quickly become in Wrath. Dirge Bard, on the other hand, is my favorite, and in my humble opinion, the strongest of them all. So, the only thing you lose is the well-versed property, which is, you know, useless. And also the Jack of All Trades quality for a plus one bonus to all skill checks, which you know is not the end of the world, it's just plus one. On the other hand, you do gain quite some nice goodies, so... First we have the Haunted Ice passive, which grants you a plus four bonus on saves against fear, curses, death effects and necromantic effects. These are some of the most annoying effects that the game has to throw at you. And remember, the Death Ward spell in Pathfinder does not make you immune to them at all. It only also increases save and it does stack with this. You gain a few fear spells which, I'll be blunt, are kinda useless. The Haunting Refrain passive at level 5 can be pretty powerful too, because it grants a very high bonus on your Intimidate checks equal to half your class level. Because I assume you want your bard to be the face of your party, we'll be focusing on Persuasion, and Intimidate is a part of Persuasion, so the higher we can get that, the better for dialogue checks. The true special quality and the most fun of them all, however, is the Dance of the Dead ability. Basically, whenever you spend one of your song uses, you can summon a lot of little skeletons to aid your character, emulating the Animate Dead spell. While these summons aren't particularly strong, by virtue of being undead, they are immune to a lot of stuff, and at the very least, they provide some nice meat shields, because you can actually cast this before battle starts, once again, thanks to the lingering performance feat. So overall, you don't really lose anything important with Dirge Bard, but gain some nice stuff, even if it's not overpowered stuff. Flame Dancer is a big miss. You mostly only gain, like, a power to add fire resistance to your party, which you know is easily achievable through the Resist Energy Communal spell, and also some pretty disappointing fire spells. Thunder Color I know is a favorite for some from the Kingmaker days, but I've always found it kinda useless as well. You do gain a Thunder Call ability and also a Storm Call ability. The problem is the damage is very low, so Thunder Call caps out at 98, which is pretty low damage considering you cannot empower this through meta magic. Once again, remember that the enemies in Wrath of the Righteous are way more powerful than the ones in Kingmaker, with far higher stats and hit points especially. Lastly, we have Thank You Whisperer, which is basically the bard with a tank song, so it replaces your Inspire Courage song by Inspire Tranquility, which increases the armor class of all your party members by a morale boost. The issue I have with this is, honestly, you don't really need all your characters to focus on armor class. Usually, only like one or two of your characters will be tanking. They're the ones that need AC. The others don't really care, so I'd much rather have a bonus to damage and attack rolls instead. Alright, so with the Bard's archetypes out of the way, let us get started on our Dirge Bard, Azata. You can always pretend it's like an emo Azata that started depressed and then became a happy Azata through the power of friendship. So when it comes to race, it's the same really human because of the bonus feat, but remember that as a Bard we have quite a lot of extra feats, so you don't necessarily have to pick human, you can truly pick anything you want for our Bard including if you want more melee potential, Thiefling, and Motherless for the extra bite attack per round. Don't be afraid of picking Elf, Dwarf, Gnome, anything really. The background is, you know, the same, Street Urchin and Pickpocket for the bonus to initiative. It really helps you have high initiative on a bard, to really get your songs going as early as battle starts. For most cases, we can pre-buff before battle with them, but because some of our songs are crowd control, or affect the enemy, we want to do them as early as we can. Alright, so stats-wise, this build will focus more on the melee side of things, because our spells are mostly buffing. So what we want to do is start with 19 Strength, then 12 Dexterity, 14 Constitution, and lastly 14 Charisma. We don't really need higher, because through excess of headbands that increase our Charisma, we will get enough to cast all of the Bard spells, which remember are only up to level 6, so we only need 16 Charisma. Strength also has quite a lot of synergy with an Azata superpower that I'll soon show you. What you can do, however, is dump Wisdom and even Intelligence, and then get more Dexterity, although it isn't really needed. Alright, so skills-wise, Bards have a lot of skill points, and to me, you definitely want both of the Knowledge and also the Lores. After all, we do get 
a massive boost to these skills through bardic knowledge. Besides that, I would also go with persuasion. After all, we want the bard to be our party face. Now, when it comes to your level 1 feats, lingering performance is the most important of them all, and you want this as soon as possible. Basically, whenever you activate a bard song, it's going to last for a single round and as long as you remain singing it, which drains your users one per each round. However, through lingering performance, whenever we activate our song, it's now going to continue for two extra rounds after we cease performing, so something very effective that you want to always do before Bard is Before battle starts, activate your song, immediately deactivate it right after, as to conserve uses, then start battle. Because of lingering performance, the song will still be on effect, and last long enough for the battle to end usually. This way you can truly conserve uses, and basically have your songs for every battle in the dungeon without having to rest. For our second feat, Combat Reflexes, just so that later we can start on our Attack of Opportunity feat line for a lot of nice extra attacks per round. When it comes to Bard spells, please remember that I already have a guide with the best arcane spells in the game that you can find linked to the side here or down below in the description, so I'll keep it simple for now. You definitely want Grease, which is the most OP level 1 spell, helps a lot early game, and then Cure Light Wounds for some nice healing on demand as bards are spontaneous casters. The deity choice is up to you, but since we are going with Azata, I like to pick Desna, which is very thematic, for roleplaying, and then you can pick Chaotic Good, or Neutral Good. At level 2, you get your first bard bonus feat, and the one you want is Exotic Weapon Proficiency, and then Fall Shard. We are going with Fall Shards, because they are rich weapons, have some pretty powerful effects, and most importantly have extreme critical range, which will come in handy with the Azata superpower, Heroic Might, to truly increase our damage with a lot of nice debuffs for free on hit. For another spell, remove fear. For our level 3 feat, weapon of focus and for shard to really help you hit targets early on. But most importantly, because this is a prerequisite for dazzling display and later shatter defenses. And then Unbreakable Heart as a spell. At level 4, increase strength, which is also what we are going to increase on all of the other levels. As for your first level 2 spells, Glitter Dust, which is quite powerful just like Grease early on, and Heroism for nice buffing. You get this even earlier than Wizards, by the way. At level 5, pick Improved Initiative. At the next level, we'll already get our Fascinate Bard Song, which is a crowd control one, and we'll want to be able to use it as early as we can during our round. And then the Blur spell. For your level 6 bonus feat, the Combat Trick, and Dazzling Display. I don't really recommend you use this, because you can just use Dirge of Doom soon enough, it's just for Shatter Defenses. And then, Mirror Image, for a nice self buff. At level 7, the choice is simple as usual. Outflank, to really get started on our super overpowered attacks of opportunity chaining. Your other level 1 spell doesn't really matter. Pick whatever you want. At level 7, we also get our highly awaited level 3 spells. Good Hope is a must. You can actually completely ignore Heroism, because Good Hope is basically Heroism on steroids that affects all your party members, and even grants a plus 2 morale bonus to damage. And then Haste, of course, another amazing buff. At level 7, our Bardic performance will also cost only a move action, which means if you are close to the enemies, you can activate it and still attack, so long as you don't move. For another level 3 spell at level 8, Displacement. Now, for our level 9 feat, this is what we've been building for, so we can already get Shattered Defenses this early. The reason is, at the previous level, level 8, we already got Dirge of Doom, which automatically shakens the enemies next to us. And like I said, if you use it as a move action, you can still attack the enemies, especially with a rich weapon, just fine. This build is probably the one that gets, you know, Shattered Defenses the earliest, because of this amazing synergy with the Dirge of Doom Bard song. For another level 3 spell, I like Remove Curse because it's always nice to have this on a spontaneous caster, just in case you need it. At level 10, pick Combat Streak and then Power Attack. The reason is, at this point in the game, we already have enough bonuses to easily take the Power Attack penalty just fine, especially since with Shatter Defenses, we are targeting the enemy's flat-footed AC. Now, this choice of level 2 spell is pretty important. We want Sense Vitals to add Sneak Attack to our character, as at this point, we have enough rounds and caster level for it to be a nice increase. Be sure to save it for bosses and tough encounters, this can really add up a lot of damage. As for your first level 4 spells, Echolocation is a must to bypass enemy concealment, and then Freedom of Movement is also great 
if only because of the very high duration, and of course the immunity to movement impairing stuff, including paralyzation. This can even block Staggered, by the way, for oracles with the powerless prophecy curse, like Darren here. For level 11, the choice is very simple, improved critical, and for shard, so at last we have 15 to 20 critical range, amazing. For another level 4 spell, I like greater invisibility just for even more concealment if needed. And then dimension door, because at this point, we'll soon be entering chapter 4, which has some nice goodies that can only be accessed if you have dimension door. At level 13, our bard song will actually become a swift action, which is amazing because we can activate this whenever we want and still be able to full attack, move, and even cast spells at the same round. As far as your level 13 feet, this can go a number of different ways, so by now we actually already have our main core feats. As I said before, bars have a lot of bonus feats, so our build is mostly set. Whatever comes now is a matter of taste, and depending on what you want your bar to specialize in. For example, if you want your bar to have as high persuasion as possible, you can get started on the skill focus line. I don't find this necessary because trust me, there's quite a lot of boosts you can get through gear to your persuasion that you can easily make all dialogue checks. What I actually like to pick now is meta magic and then heightened spell for some extra spellbook flexibility with our bard spells, but most importantly with the Azata spells, one of them is especially powerful, believe in yourself, which can grant morale bonuses to our allies and even our own ability scores. There's nothing quite like this in the game, and because the bonus is morale, it will stack with pretty much everything else. The more slots we have of that spell, the better, because we can actually buff our entire character's ability scores with this. Your other level 3 spell here doesn't matter that much. As for your first level 5 spells, Greater Heroism is a given, and I personally also enjoy Greater Spell Magic, as we are a spontaneous caster, so if you need to spell the enemy, you always have this available. So from level 14 onwards, your feats are really up to you. I wouldn't recommend you pick Arcane Strike, because even though this can increase your damage by some stacking amount, it costs a swift action, and at this point, your bard songs are already swift actions. You cannot have two swift actions, you can only use one at the same round. So there's not much synergy with this and bard. Something that you can do for a more melee bard is get started into the cleave line, so cleave, which is useless for us at this point, but just so at the next level we can get cleaving finish, which is quite powerful, and this is what I'm going to do. But there's a lot of other stuff you can pick, you can even go with the vital strike line if you want. Your other level 5 spell is somewhat useless, I'll just pick joyful rapture, because it lets you heal up some ability damage. And then at level 15, cleaving finish, so we get an extra attack whenever we kill an enemy, something that will happen very often now, especially thanks to our Azata boosts. I'll just pick your light wounds here, and then your critical wounds. As for your first level 6 spells, like I said, honestly, the bard ones aren't really that good. Brilliant Inspiration is easily outclassed by the Fortune Hex ability from Witches and Shamans. Animal buffs, you already have other casters for that and we don't really have high DC for some of these other spells. I would just pick Mass Cat's Grace just in case, because usually only Druids have this, Clerics and Oracles don't, and then Cure Moderate Wounds Mass. Ideally, you would much rather use Heightened spells to slot this. For level 17, you can really pick anything. I'll go with Great Cleave here, if only to get Improved Cleaving Finish later on, but remember, this is not needed, you can pick whatever you want. Alright, so from level 17 onwards, we are actually at the crossroads, because as far as Bard, we already have the highest scaling Spire Courage ability, the best spells, well, basically the best everything. All that is left for us if we keep Bard progression is basically an extra feat, another plus one to inspire competence, and the Bard Capstone ability is really bad. So what I recommend you do now, if you want, is multi-class. There are really a lot of different ways that this can go, the first multi-classing dip I'd recommend is Ranger and Demon Slayer. Just a single level in this, well first you have higher base attack bonus than a bard, but most importantly you gain favored enemy against all of the demons in the game, which means an extra plus 2 to attack and damage rolls. And at this point in the game, it's basically all demons that we're fighting, including the toughest of enemies. For level 19, the second dip I'd recommend is the infamous alchemist and vivisectionist. We get sneak attack, but most importantly our mutagen of course, which can increase our strength by plus 4 alchemical. This only lasts 10 minutes, with just a single class level, but that's more than enough for the tough battles. 
and even a lot of dungeon time. And then I'd pick Improved Cleaving Finish. Well, of course, you we'll also get like Alchemist spells here, which won't matter that much besides True Strike, at this point in the game at least. Now, as for your true last level, I would also keep to Vivisectionist, so we can gain the Pharaoh Mutagen ability, which grants us a Bite attack, so that's another attack per round. It is true that this is just at level 20, but you know why not. It is basically for free. Lastly, the extra level in Vivisectionist also means our Strength Mutagen will last double the amount, 20 minutes, which is quite respectable and enough for any dungeon. Alright, so now let's talk about Mythic Progression for our Bard Azata. There are two choices here. Instrument of Freedom is of course the most thematic one, and also if you want to truly support your party members by adding nice irresistible holy damage to their attacks, pick this. If you want to be a more selfish bard, with more melee power, pick close to the abyss for the extra gore attack. I'll be going with Instrument of Freedom, but you can pick both. For your first mythic ability, I would pick Abundant Casting. The reason is, as I said before, our low level bard spells, exactly level 1, 2 and 3, are very powerful. Especially Blur for Consumment, but most importantly Haste, and we want to spam that for basically the entire dungeon, so on all battles. For Mythic level 2, extra mythic ability, and then Ever Ready. This scales quite wonderfully with each mythic rank you get, and at this point we already have Outflank, the same for our whole party, so we can truly really get started on our powerful attacks of opportunity chains. For Mythic level 3, as an Azata bard you have a few different choices. So, if you want to play the support role to the max, you can go with, for example, Inspirational Leader. I just prefer to leave this to other characters like Scylla. The same for Leading Strike. My preferred choice here is Mythic Charge, because of the amazing synergy this will have with our first Azata superpower at the next Mythic rank. However, if you don't have a Scald party member to provide pounds to you, Charge isn't going to be that useful. I do have a Scald though, so it's the one I'm going to pick. At Mythic rank 4, be sure to pick Mythic Improved Critical and Full Shard, for a really nice boost to damage. And now at last we have our first Azata superpower. Because we are a melee focused bard with support to the side, the best one early is without a doubt Incredible Might. Now please remember that I already have a main in-depth Azata guide that you can check link to the side here or in the description, where I cover each one of these abilities to the max. For this build, I'll keep it simple. So Incredible Might basically grants your Azata a very nice bonus equal to their mythic rank on both attack and damage rolls as morale. Even just at rank 4, it's already plus 4, which by the way is the highest morale bonus you can get from the Heroic Invocation spell, which is level 9 and we get this super early. Second, and here's the fun part, whenever we hit the enemy with a charge attack, that's why I picked Mythic Charge and the Pounce from the Scald, or with a critical hit, which is why we went with four shards for high criticals, the enemy has to pass a Fortitude saving throw with a respectable DC because it's a spare hit, with a bonus based on your Strength modifier, also why we went with Strength, and got the Alchemist Mutagen. And anyways, if they fail the saving throw, they can get hit with quite a lot of different effects at random, Become stunned, prone, pushed away, and stunned, no longer move and suffer penalty to armor class, exhausted, or even outright killed. All of these effects are quite powerful, especially stunning and prone, because the enemy can't do anything. So overall, it is quite a stacked and very powerful ability. And if we have pounds with Mythic Charge, every single one of our attacks per round when charging will proc this super power. So it doesn't need any saying, it's very useful. For Mythic Rank 5, you know... An Azata Bard build is actually not really mythic ability starved, because since we aren't a full caster we don't have to spend a lot on, let's say, abundant casting and enduring spells. We have a lot of freedom here. If you are on unfair, you can of course go with last stand for a lot higher survivability if needed, although remember we are a rich build, so we are mostly safe from harm, and we can even ride Ivo, our friendly dragon companion too, to ignore our armor class. What we can do is pick Elemental Barrage. This will highly increase our damage, especially because there is a very easy to get Shockfall Shard early on. We just need a single other source of elemental damage. The problem is, as a Bardazata, it's hard to get that on our own. If you have a wizard ally, however, like Nenyo, you can then cast the Firebrand spell to properly add fire damage to us, which then lets us proc Elemental Barrage. If you don't, however, it's going to be a bit hard to proc this until the Dragon Familiar Jarsigax, which is way later on. 
So assuming you aren't using Nanyo, you can go with Leading Strike, which makes for a powerful combo if you are riding Ivu. For Mythic level 6, I'd go with Mythic Power Attack, but you can also pick Mythic Improved Initiative earlier, I just think the bonus from Power Attack is more constant, as Initiative only applies to the first round of combat, and Power Attack as well to all your attacks during the battle. Alright, so at 6 we also get our second Azata superpower. There are basically two choices for us. As we aren't a, a spellcaster with difficulty class spells, ZP magic and favorable magic are out of the question. What you want is either all skilled or marvelous endurance. So supersonic speed is like a haste effect, but you know we can just cast the haste spell instead. <laughs> marvelous endurance is quite unique in that it adds a massive amount of regeneration per round to your Azata. From Mythic rank 4 onwards, it is plus 5 per Mythic rank, so you can eventually end up with like more than 30 hit points regenerated per round, something that I find very fun. But of course, at this point you also have access to super powerful healing spells like heal and mass heal from your clerics or divine casters, so you might not find this as useful. All skilled is another very good Azata superpower, First, it grants a bonus equal to your mythic rank to all of your skill checks, quite amazing. And even lets you brawl twice whenever making a skill check. This is why I said Vardazatas have like a super easy time making persuasion and other lore checks. Lastly, it even makes you proficient with all kinds of weapons and armor. And I know you might ask, why pick exotic proficiency for shard if with all skill we are going to be proficient in for shards? Well, because with exotic we get for shard at level 2. With all skilled, it takes until Mythic rank 6, which is, you know, way, way later in the game. That's like 40 hours later, and I'm not even exaggerating. Now, besides that, at Mythic 6, you can also pick Life Molding Friendship indeed. As a bard, we do have enough charisma that this will let our characters keep on fighting if they're about to die for a little longer. The only issue I have with this is that, frankly, the last 10 feet is vastly superior. But, you know, with Life Molding, it's Basically for free, well, it does cost a superpower. As for the free teamwork feat that you're going to give your party members, this can go a number of different ways. Shake it off, I believe, is a very nice choice. When it comes to outflank, chances are everyone already picked it way before you got life bonding friendship. And as for precise strike, it's kinda iffy because as far as I'm aware, the extra damage is applied separately, so... Demons will easily negate it through their own damage resistance, as it is just 1d6. I'll go with all skilled because I usually have other ways of healing my character. Also, here's a fun fact. Azatas get the instant enemy spell for free, and since we went with Demon Slayer levels, even if the enemy is not a demon, we can still use instant enemy as a swift action to get a plus 2 to damage and attack rolls. For Mythic rank 7, I'd pick Elemental Barrage, if only because by now you're close to getting the Dragon Familiar Jarcy gags, but like I said before, you can also have an Enio cast Firebrand. At Mythic rank 8, be sure to pick Mythic Improved Initiative, as at this point we are close to the end game where the enemies have way higher initiative scores. As for our last superpower, the one you didn't pick before, so in my case Marvelous Endurance, which at this point adds like more than 40 regeneration per round. For your last Mythic ability at Mythic rank 9, well you can truly pick anything you want, I'll go with last stand just you know to keep it safe against the Demon Lords and the Inevitable Access DLC. When it comes to Mythic rank 10, you truly can pick any other superpower you want, so it's between all skilled, marvelous endurance or life molding friendship. The one that's left here is the one you pick. And as for a Mythic feat or ability, really anything you want goes. So now that we know how to fully build our Azata Bard, let's get into gear selection. So the amulet, you know I always say this, Valexis Magnifying Amulet is the best, but as a Bard we also have a very special amulet that we can find pretty early game. At the very start, even around chapter 1, the Amulet of Epic Songs. The natural armor part is, you know, fine, but doesn't really matter. The best part is, if you have the Bardic Performance class ability, so able to cast songs, your Amulet will grant an additional 6 rounds of Bardic Performance per day, pretty great for the early game, especially when you combine it with Lingering Song. When it comes to the armor slot, as a Bard, be sure to always go for Chain Shirts, especially Mithril Chain Shirts, the best and most thematic one being Eternal Ballad, which prevents your songs from being interrupted if you are stunned or knocked prone. For the robe slot, we have a few different choices. For example, I have the Wandering Conman here, to empower my attacks of opportunity, but you can also go with Cloths of Fortification, and even the very unique Robe of Mephistopheles, 
which can only be found in the Azata and Aeon paths, for the super overpowered Aura that debuffs the enemy saving throw by a very high amount. For the belt slot, be sure to focus on belts that increase both your strength and constitution. As for the glove slot, Arilo's embroidered gloves are always the best defensive-wise, but we have a few other choices here such as the dashing cavalier's gloves that can be found super early and grant extra damage while mounted, and you can actually write Ivo your own dragon, the gloves of death dealer for additional sneak attack damage and we do get sneaks from the sense vital spell, and also the fencer's gift for higher damage with our full shard. Boots wise, you know, Ronex Sacrifice are pretty much always the best. Now when it comes to the Helm slot, well, ideally helmets that increase our Charisma, as both our Azata and Bard spells work from Charisma. However, early on the Hat of Heartening Song, a unique Bard item, is very useful, because whenever you use one of your Bard songs, all of your party members will be granted regeneration that even increases per level. So this is a very nice effect to have and can be found super early at chapter 2 during Scylla's quest. Later you can change it to the Mental Perfection headbands. For the Goggles slot, well, Goggles of Piercing Gaze, not only for the insight bonus against outsiders, but also the super high competence boost to Persuasion. And if you want to keep the Head of Heartening Song equipped for regeneration, you can also go for the Broken Trickster Glasses, that can be found at the latest DLC, the Treasure of the Midnight Isles, for the plus 6 to Wisdom and Charisma, and of course the super powerful tanky effect. The cloaks, well, the usual cloaks of resistance with the highest effect. The Azata cloak is kinda disappointing and underwhelming. For rings, the Ring of the Guiding Star as usual, for the bonus to initiative, and also the Ring of Evasion, since we do get extremely high saving throws. Even without the bonus from Guarded Heart, we still have quite a lot. As for Bracers, the Bracers of Abrupt Onslaught for an extra sneak attack damage. The Bracers of Dominance early on can also work, because whenever we make a critical hit with our two-handed weapon, very often we force shards, the enemies have to pass a will saving throw, kinda respectable DC 24, or be unable to attack for one round. Eventually the DC will become low, but there's lots of ways of debuffing the enemy's will. The Bracers of Harmful Conversion can also work, as whenever you get a critical hit, the enemy has to pass a fortitude DC of 29, or suffer from some of these nasty conditions. Kinda low DC though, but it is on hit. Now when it comes to weapons, this build focused on four shards. I have chosen the Shock Mithril for shard here, if only because it has electricity damage, which means it is very easy to proc elemental barrage by combining it with another element, such as the Firebrand spell, or the Dragon Familiar Jarsig Axe and even some of your Azata Sonic boosting spells later on. But remember, I already have a guide with the best 4 shards in the game, including complete progression from early to the late game, that you can check link to the side here. Now let's cover the quick slot, so... Lucky Dice, this is a pretty neat item, to grant some nice boosts that work per rest. The Signet of House Vespertilio, as usual, to boost one of your skills, most likely Persuasion. Jarsigax, as I've mentioned before. Now the Tankard of Free Spirit is here because it's actually an item that has a unique effect when used by Anazata, as your summons will come with Heroism for free, kinda good for when you first find this item. Lastly, the Old Grimoire, just to grant us even more casts of our powerful level 1, 2 and 3 spells, so we really can spam haste as much as we want. Well, alright everyone, so this was it from my Azata Bard guide. I hope you found it useful, as it was a very fun build to me and usually different from what I tend to do. As always, please remember to support the channel if you can, by liking, subscribing and even becoming a channel member to access some exclusive content. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends, with even more Pathfinder builds and guides.